Well, good afternoon, everyone, um, and welcome. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, HAP webinar. It's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, my name is David Rassam. I'm a sales brokerage advisor here at IAD, Insurance Advisors Direct. IAD is a full-service FMO, and our commitment to you as agents uh, is to make you uh, very, very successful in the field. We provide our agents with lots of services, including insurance education, Education, marketing material, sales students, and much more. Today, I would like to welcome Kyle Ingram, who is from Health Alliance Plan, to educate us more about this new 2022 Inflation Reduction Act and its impact on the Medicare market. If you have any questions, please place them in the chat box, and then we will um, answer them later on. Now, without further ado, please, Kyle, if you can take it from here. You got it. Thank you very much, David. Uh, thank very you welcome. for the whole IED team for uh, putting this together today. Uh, as David mentioned, my name is Kyle Ingram. I'm the lead Medicare consultant for HAP. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, please make sure you send me a message. I uh, would love to set up a time to meet with you in person, talk about some of the great things HAP has going on, uh, both in 2023 and the future. But obviously today we are focusing in on the Inflation Reduction Act, which really hit mostly when it comes to diabetes management, the drugs for diabetes, uh, and a few other formulary situations. So without going on too much about that, I'm just going to get technology to catch up with me. There we go. So the Inflation Reduction Act, as you all know, was passed just this past summer. So it was interesting timing for a lot of the carriers out there, considering it was passed in the summer and all of us had already filed all of our plans, rates, formularies, all of that fun stuff. And then new regulation comes out to become effective this year. So wanted to quickly go over what the impacts are for the Inflation Reduction Act of the IRA in 2023, 2024, and beyond, as well as how HAP is working already in conjunction with what was going on with those, what we're kind of planning to do, and then also a little bit of market analysis of what we're kind of expecting to see as these rules go into place. So under the IRA, insulin covered under Part D, that's D as in dog, that's on a carrier's formulary is capped at $35 through all Part D phases for a one-month supply. So that's a great thing for a lot of our members out there. There's a lot of influence or plans that didn't have a senior savers model attached to it. So it had, you know, the full cost share, especially or the full catastrophic phase and coverage gap phase on those drugs with really no protections in place. So it's a really great benefit for that. As for some other, the senior savers model still is in play. So we're going to get to that a little bit later. One other thing that we were asked a lot about this was insulin for pump. So that is covered under Part B like boy. When the Senior Savers Model Act was put into play a few years ago, they removed insulin from Part D formularies and put it in as Part B. So that's been a much higher expense for our members. So it's been a 20% copay. Some relief is coming for those members July 1st of 2023. That will be included in the $35 a month cap. So that is a a huge savings, especially for those members, uh, will help a lot of people on the cost share moving forward with that. And again, this regulation does not impact senior savers models or drugs that are not considered to be insulin, such as Trulicity, Jardians, and Ozempic. We've had a lot of questions come across with those. Does the $35 cap apply to them? They are not insulin, therefore they are not covered under the IRA. So future impacts of the Inflation Reduction Act. In 2024, the catastrophic uh, coverage phase for Part D no longer will have co-payments or co-insurance associated with it for the members. So as you know, right now, it's that 5% co-insurance that is going away. Uh, they will no longer have that there. And also the LIS or the low income subsidy is going from 135% of poverty to 150. So giving relief to uh, a little bit more of our population to be able to get that low income subsidy. In 2025, Part D costs will be capped at $2,000 and that Part D cost can be spread out across 12 months versus as incurred. I'm going to stop a lot of questions with this right now and let you know none of us know how this is actually going to be enacted. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of guidance put into play with that. We don't know how this is going to be administered, who's going to have the oversight on it. I'm sure a lot of that is going to be on the carrier side, but again, there's still a lot to come on that. We have another whole 
year and two thirds until we're actually there. Uh, so the government's kind of taking their time on being able to get those full regulations out to us on how it is to be administered. But it is extremely exciting, especially for members on insulin or high cost drugs to have that cost capped at $2,000 and that cost to be spread out over 12 months. In 2026 and beyond, there's going to be some high cost drugs, both in Part D and D, that the government is going to be doing negotiations on pricing for them to help cap the cost of those as well with the actual pharmaceutical companies. So they're going to aim for 15 part drugs in 2025. That will become a effective in 2027. So everything has a two-year leg time before the member will actually see the impact of that pricing change. So in 2026, they're going to negotiate another 15 part B and D, another 20 part B and D in 2027, and 20 more part B and D drugs in 20, or excuse me, uh, yeah, part B and D drugs in 2028 to go on after that. But again, none of our members in Michigan will see any effect of those changes until at the very soonest 2027. So I had mentioned before, the senior savers model doesn't go away with uh, what the senior savers model does. The way that it's written is select brand name insulins are capped at $35 during the initial coverage phase and the coverage gap phase. So the nice part about this is that the carriers is basically saying they have to be covered at least at the very highest at $35 for one month supply, but us as carriers can file better cost shares if we would like to. This is where I think HAP is in a really good place with that because for 2023, we had actually filed our four insulin. So that's Novolog, Novolin, Lantus, and Tegeo under the senior savers model, where our members can get a 90-day mail order of that for $0 cost share through the initial and coverage gap phase. Then you know, once they get out of that coverage gap phase, now the $35 cap applies and catastrophic. So it's a great benefit for those members to be able to get through at a low cost share. I highly suggest utilizing Pharmacy Advantage for that. Uh, their information is all on this slide. I can't print this and send it out, but hopefully uh, you have a quick second to write down that number if you don't have it or reach out to me and I'll make sure that we get you the draft information for Pharmacy Advantage as well. But this is included on all of our Medicare Advantage plans, except for the DSNIP. Uh, remember the DSNIP, which LIS is going to apply, the LIS co-pays are in place. So typically those are better than, you know, that $35 cap, there's really one main hit where it's LIS level four, where it's going to be $35 a month cap because of the Inflation Reduction Act. And so it's basically $105 for that three month supply. Looking at how HAP covers this compared to some of our competitors, you know, they have the senior savers model in place. They're already covering it or it's through the Inflation Reduction Act at $35 a month. But again, three month supply, that's $105. You could be saving your members a lot of money throughout the year and doing the quick math with four. $120 a year on insulin costs by going through the senior savers model with HAP for a $0.90 day mail order. So I had mentioned that the Part D insulins covered under HAP. Under our senior savers model, our Novolin, Novolog, Glantis, and Tegeo, we do also have Humalog R. That one is not part of the senior saver, or the Humalin R, excuse me, 500. That is not covered under the senior savers model. So that's going to be impacted by the Inflation Reduction Act at the $35 for a one month, one month supply copay. But again, I believe leave off the top of my head that was a tier four or five for us before. So it's a huge savings for members on insulin with the Inflation Reduction Act. Next, along for our diabetic members, there's other great benefits that come along, not just what's covered under the IRA or the uh, senior savers model, and that's the other diabetic benefits that we have. So a $0 continuous glucose monitor, so that can be the freestyle lead rate or the Dexcom 6. Uh, I know there was just a really big Super Bowl ad for the Dexcom Model 7. We're working to see if we can get that included in this year at some point in time. So just know we saw that ad just like your members did, and we're already working trying to get that included into our plans. But for the time being, it's the freestyle lead rate 1 and 2 or the Dexcom Model 6. Free home delivery through Pharmacy Advantage Tier 1, Tier 2, or our Senior Saver Model Drugs 90-day mail order for $0 cost share. We also also have zero dollar cost in network for diabetic self management training or supplies. So the lancets, the test strips, all those things. If you're going to the pharmacy, it has to be the freestyle brand for the test strips. But if they get it from a DME supplier, all the different brand names are going to be zero dollar cost share for that as well, as well as zero dial zero dollar podiatry visit on all of our individual Medicare plans when performed by a podiatrist. So that's huge. And one of the plug I'm going to throw in there is if you're not already trying to partner with podiatrists, 
I would highly suggest doing so. It's a market that not a lot of agents are going after, but knowing 80% of their patients are diabetic members, it's a huge way for you to show them a value right off the bat, being able to provide HAPs to their members because of the drug cost shares. The fact they have $0 visits, so they're able to continue to see their podiatrist. That's a huge, huge benefit for them. Care management. So chronic and complex conditions may need healthcare providers, prescriptions, appointments, and treatments. Uh, we provide educating and support to help you follow your treatment plan and keep your daily health goals on track. Uh, we'll create an approach just for you. We're here to help. So we'll help coordinate your care, educate about your condition, advocate for your safety and the quality of care. And then also, because we don't require referrals, you can refer yourself to your doctor. You can pretty much refer anybody. Go see any in-network providers if you're on our HMO plans. No referrals are needed. But also, you can refer anybody you need to to our care management team to be able to help them work for your, your different situations or your members' different situations. We also have Lavongo that we utilize for type 1 and type 2 diabetes management. So again, if they need automatic supplies of test strips or something else sent to them on a monthly basis, Lavongo can set that up with them. And also, if they have diabetes and high blood pressure, they can get a free blood cough sent to them through Lavongo. And it's really just a whole way that we're trying to empower members to handle their self-care, their maintenance, make sure that they have all the supplies they need. And again, all of this is on top of the great benefits brought in for them with the Inflation Reduction Act and the Senior Savers Models for Cost Savings. We're trying to provide all the support, supporting documents and supplies that they need as well. Home meals are delivered after an inpatient stay. So if they are diabetic and they've been in the hospital, they're going to get 14 days worth of meals shipped to them. It's going to be, they can be done based off their diet. They can call in and let us know is it kosher? Do they need something else? We can definitely cater those to what they need, but it's going to be healthy, ready to eat meals delivered to their home after the discharge, and that's through mom's meals. And then we have a diabetes prevention program as well. That's administered by the National Kidney Foundation. It teaches ways to be more physically active and other behavior changes over the course of a 16-week uh, session. You'll work towards losing 5% of the body weight and being physically active over 150 minutes per week. So again, just trying to wrap all of these savings you have, all the supplies you need, all of the support tools that members need, and trying to provide all of those at no cost here for our members so that they're able to be as healthy, live as long as they want to. Um, we're not here trying to get away with members not using benefits. We're going to reach out to them, let them know these are available, and automatically send the meals after they've been discharged if they qualify. So that's very important for the members as well. So non-insulin coverage that I want to make you aware of is we reduced all of the medications listed on your screen to tier two. So that's going to allow for these drugs and the big ones, you know, Ozempic, Trulicity, Victoza, Jardian. Those are all $0 for a 90-day mail order during the initial phase. So yes, I know it doesn't give them coverage through the coverage gap. I know that it does, you know, it's still going to be expensive when they get to that point, but it allows them to get there with the least out-of-pocket expenses possible. We did a quick view, and again, this is, could have changed. I was just doing a, a Medicare.gov search, and it looked like if I just put in Ozempic, the closest regional carrier was somewhere between three and $400 more than us a year by doing 90-day mail order. And the closest national was actually up close to $700 a year. So it's a huge savings for your members, even though if you say, hey, they're still going to have the, you know, the coverage gap they have to deal with. Yes, that's going to be there, but they're actually going to save a lot of money over the whole course of the year because of this tier reduction with us. The other part I want to add into this is I said I was going to talk about a little bit of market analysis, right? So, and this is where I'm going to state on here, this is my opinion. This is not hat beliefs or, uh, or where they stand on everything. This is me just being a Medicare professional and kind of seeing how the inner workings go with carriers. Listen, with the cap that's going to be coming in place in 2025 of $2,000 on prescription drugs, and with the cap of $35 hitting all plans this year for insulin, understand there's a lot of MA plans and PDP plans out there that did not have the senior savers model. So they were not expecting a cap of $35 even through the coverage gap, let alone initial, or the catastrophic phase. A lot of those companies as well, your big PDP companies, your big uh, national carriers that didn't include senior savers models on some of their plans, they're they are all publicly held companies, which means they have to show profit and dividends to their investors, make their investors happy. This is what we call kind of a an MLR or the loss ratio nightmare coming into play for them because there's caps 
that they didn't plan for when they were making their formularies for this year. So I'm expecting, again, personally, my opinion, that we are going to see a lot of shakeup both in pricing and formulary in the PDP world and the MedSup world, because those kind of go hand in hand. And then also in the MAPD world, some benefit changes from those companies that did not plan for this. There are a bunch of companies that, that cover drugs great and they may not feel the impact, but then there's also a lot that are going to be, I'm expecting some impact to come on that, where either they're going to have to pull some very, very rich plans out completely or change benefits. So just keep an eye on that. I think we're looking into another huge year of uh, MedSup to Medicare Advantage movements. Uh, we've had, I know this wasn't about the subsidy, but a lot of members just lost their uh, Medigap subsidy in Michigan or they're going to be losing that. Then the price changes, the PDP cost shares that I'm expecting to come in next year and probably some rate increases to help offset how big of a PDP jump we're probably going to have to see. I'm really expecting to see another big push in the Medicare Advantage this year. And I know the supplementals have been something everybody's looking at. Everybody's looking at dental benefits. Everybody's looking at these other things. But if you're talking about an insulin dependent member and you're looking, there's a $500 benefit for them better to go on a dental side one place or another, or if there's out of network coverage here or there, there's a good chance they're giving all that money back on the prescription drug side when they're having to pay for insulin, whether it be through the coverage gap or somewhere else. That $35 cap is going to still cost them when they could be on a hat plan at $0 for 90-day mail order. So that is, as I had mentioned, David, it's not a very long presentation because the Inflation Reduction Act wasn't massive for us. It's just the impact that I think we're going to see come in over the next couple of years with all these changes. So I know I went over through a lot of information in 20 minutes. Um, is there any questions at all? Either, David, you can think of that I didn't go through. If anybody wants to drop them into the, the chat box, any questions that you have that I can go through for you. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been uh, I've been muted actually. So the question is that uh, what type of impact are these changes going to have in the market as a whole? Yeah, I really think that's going to be another really big shift from MedSup and PDP plans to Medicare Advantage. Okay. Uh, you know, the market's already going that way, right? It traditionally was eight to nine percent is going from MedSup to Medicare Advantage every year during AEP. This past year, the final numbers haven't come out, but what we've seen internally from our MedSup to our Medicare Advantage plan seems to be higher than that. Uh, by at least a point or two. Now you're putting in shakeup, especially on the drug cost side and everything else. I think you're going to see a lot more movement going that way. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw 15% movement next AEP from this. So Medicare Advantage already now is the majority of the payer for Medicare beneficiaries in the country. I'm expecting that to just increase next year because of all these cost shares, how the pricing models are going to have to change. What I'm expecting formularies to probably change with some comp uh, competition out there. It's, I think that's going to be the biggest impact. The good news is for our members in Michigan, great savings for them on this. To be able to say there's a cap on your drugs in Medicare of $2,000 a year is massive to a lot of members out there, especially if they're on those Ozempics, the Trulicities, which are, if you look at the retail costs, those are $1,000 a month mm -hmm. with some of them. Uh, so being able to put a cap on that is a big benefit. Actually, one question is that, uh, another one, if you go back to the uh, previous slide, so these changes are going to apply from uh, said July 1st, of 2023 this this year so the part d so the insulin cap for part d's actually went into effect for one one. Oh, okay the part b insulin so that's insulin for pumps that's starting july 1st okay. there's only one pump that if your members are on that their uh, insulin is completely considered part D and that's an Omnipod pump. Okay. That's because the members actually get a vial just like if they're going to self-inject, but instead they fill the reservoir of the pump. So there's no difference in the delivery method and that's covered under part D. All of the other insulin for pumps are part B and that change will effectively go in on July 1st of this year at the $35 cap. Insulin is there either the injectable or the, the pens, right? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Anything covered under a Part D, if it's on the carrier's formulary, it has to be capped at $35 if it's an insulin. I'm sorry, David, one more quick thing that I didn't go over. If the plan did not enact this, or if for any reason members were on a plan in January or February of this year and they paid more than $35, the plan 
has to reimburse within 30 calendar days for any amount you paid over that. So if you, yeah, if your pharmacy charged more of that, say you were on a mail order with somebody and they charged you more automatically, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter who the carrier is, reach out because the plans have to reimburse that difference within 30 days of you submitting it to them. All right. I don't see any other uh, questions. Um, well, is the chat, is the chat working, David? I just had somebody email me saying that. They weren't able to type in the chat. Yeah, no, sometimes it's held on. Sometimes it will be held for just. Okay, now they can type in any questions. Let's wait uh, okay. just a second here. And then, well, uh, but thank you very much. This is really, really valuable information for our agents. In the meantime, thank you very much for attending this webinar. We are going to have another webinar coming up on uh, March 14th at 10 a.m. And this, uh, Kyle will be joining us again and to talk about West Michigan um, expansion of HAP. Also, I will be emailing each one of you my contact information. A lot of a lot of you actually, I see the names that I've talked to before. If you have any question that you couldn't ask, you couldn't ask during this webinar, please just email me and email me back, and I will get you the answer. Or you can call me at 800-381-0977, and I'm an extension one two seven. Okay, so I guess um, Kyle, I don't see any other uh, questions here. If there aren't any, then thank you very much again. Thank you everybody for joining us and thank you Kyle for this valuable information and everybody have a great day. Yes, thank you very much for putting this together and again anybody uh, that wants to go over this one-on-one, please feel free to shoot a message over me and we'll set up a meeting. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great day.